How's it going everybody? My name is Magneti and welcome to my very first Valheim video and today we're going to be talking about the ultimate or complete beginner's guide. I'm going to give you a, a amazing quick start to Valheim but first I got to create my character so I'll be back. All right, here we are with my character. This is going to be the very start. I'm gonna walk you through everything you need to know to get the best absolute start you can. First, before we jump in though, I wanna mention five things real quick. The first thing is gonna be that if you've ever played Minecraft, you have a major advantage over just about anybody else that starts this game out because Valheim is a lot like Minecraft. It's very similar in a lot of different ways. Next is gonna be Hugin. This is a raven that kind of, uh, flies you in in the beginning which you'll see in a moment and he's going to be very helpful throughout the game he gives you hints he he helps you just about everywhere you go but the only thing is is he doesn't really teach you any controls if there are going to be like if you're doing anything specific um, usually the controls are in the bottom right corner of the screen and that'll tell you to be like down here and then the third thing here is going to be that every world is generated uniquely uh, in and of itself. It's a lot like Minecraft in that sense where there's seeds to every world. Now, the map does look very similar. It is uh, always going to be an island with, you know, one to two to maybe even many more islands scattered around the main island, but how the map is built in and of itself will be complete, completely unique for every game you start. And the fourth, second to last thing here is that in the very beginning, early game, stay away from the Black Forest. Now, in the top right corner here, there will be a mini-map, and in the bottom left corner, um, or, it, so in the top right corner of your screen, there will be a mini-map up here, and then in one of the four corners of the mini-map itself, it'll say, like, meadows, or black forest, or mountains. Make sure you stay away from black forest, and, I mean, don't go in the mountains either, early game, but... You know, try and stick around the meadows, well, the meadows while you are still trying to figure out, you know, everything about the game, how it's played, stuff like that. Now, the fifth and final note is that you need to be extremely, extremely careful when you're chopping down trees because trees are murderous and they will just, they do not care about your feelings or anything. They will just completely end you and it is not fun if they fall on you or if they fall on other trees they will break you it is it is not a good time all right so this is the, the very beginning when you uh start a new server it says here long ago the all father odin united the worlds he threw down his foes and cast them into the tenth world then split the bo the boughs that held their prison to the world tree and left it to drift un unanchored a place of exile for centuries this world slumbered uneasily but it did not die as glacial ages passed kingdoms rose and fell out of sight of the gods when odin heard his enemies were growing once again in strength he looked to midgard and sent his valkyries to scour the battlefields for the greatest of their warriors dead to the world they would be born again in valheim and that is a little bit of the lore behind the game um but you know it's a good introduction to valheim and you know, kind of a little bit of a backstory, but here, here we are right here in the beginning of the game, and I'm going to warn you that this game is in early access, just like Satisfactory, if you watched any of those videos from my channel. So, um, I, I'm quite sorry if the video is a little choppy. For some reason, the copy that I have of the game is really, really choppy. Anyways, moving on, this is Hugin here flying you in, I think. I think it's supposed to be Hugin. It might be uh, M uh, Munion or M Monion or something. Uh, Hugin's brother. Um, so this game is based entirely on uh, Norse mythology and the actual Norse religion, which I can't remember. Uh, I know it's not called Nor Norse mythology, but it is based off of Norse mythology. And right away here, we're going to want to talk to Hugin and uh, start gathering early game resources. So here we go. So once we talk to Hugin, we're going to want to start gathering wood and stones and flint immediately right off the bat so the starting area everywhere you start will always look basically the same the general starting area is uh very very similar um, this is actually a little different from when i first started but when my wife played for her first time it looked pretty damn close to the same place i started on my first time now to collect early game resources you're going to want to punch these small trees and gather rocks on the ground and uh, when you find a rock or a tree branch on the ground or even like flint, like here, I'll show you real quick. You're going to have to push E on it and then either walk up to it or make sure you stay close to it. 
or push E again to ensure that you actually collect the resource itself. It's kind of like the first time you push E on it, it's just like breaking it from the ground and then you have to actually collect it. And here is your first enemy if you're fighting one early on like me in this save apparently. They're called Graylings, they're pretty easy to fight. Left click to punch, right click to block, middle mouse button to kick, and um, yeah, they're, they're pretty easy to fight. So right away early game, if you are playing with friends, you're gonna wanna know that shift clicking on items in your inventory. Here, let me backtrack a little bit here. If you click tab and then, uh, you know, move the mouse cursor, hold shift and then left click on any item that is stacked. Like my resin here has three, my rocks have six. It'll automatically, if you shift click, it'll automatically cut the stack in half. And that is the best way to share items with friends. Now, as well, if you're playing with friends, you may want to know that the map here is, uh, you know, push M to open the map. You, you're going to want to click visible to other players. So this will make it so that your friends can see you. And then on top of that, there are these five icons over here that will show you. Uh, well, they won't show you anything, but these five icons are um, you can place them anywhere on the map. So right now I have fire selected. So if I double click anywhere, I can um, mark this fire on the map and name it fire one if I wanted. And then, uh, you know, click home, and then we can put uh, make map markers here. And then if I make a mistake, say I want to put this on a dungeon, and I spelled dungeon with two O's or something, I misspelled it, I can right click and delete it. And I'm actually going to do that for all of these because I do not want to mark anything right now. But these are the map markers, extremely, extremely useful. Again, if you're playing with friends, make sure you click this. And then as well, along with that, you can enable PVP up here. This is the inventory menu right here. Just push tab, come up here, take damage from, what did that say? Take damage from other players, friendly fire. Friendly fire is enabled. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. I'm not a big fan of PVP. If we go back, back into the map real quick, say you want to mark um, a dungeon or something, double click here, dungeon one. Make sure that if you are in this location, you let any of your friends know that there's a dungeon here. Just say, hey, there's a dungeon here on my location. Uh, go ahead and, you know, if you want to know where this dungeon is, just go ahead and mark it, whatever, you know, so that way you can share because these map markers are only shown to you. They aren't shown to your friends. So share them, let them know, you know, where you are. They can mark it for themselves if they want. If not, you know, whatever. All right, so our very first objective, we want to craft an ax, a club, and a hammer as quickly as possible. This, again, is a lot like Minecraft, so you want to make sure that you get into shelter as soon as you can. So collecting these early game resources, coming into your menu here, crafting a stone axe when you have five wood and four stone it's going to be very important club and hammer as well so hugan will uh kind of pop up randomly and he'll uh he'll provide you with hints but before i talk to him uh make sure you collect these raspberries if you come up to any of these raspberries these little bushes they'll have raspberries on them make sure you pick that up because that uh that could be used as food and i'll talk about food later and if you could see in the bottom right corner here, it's got mouse one, mouse three, mouse two, mouse two plus space. Those are the controls. So mouse one is left click, mouse two is right click, mouse three is middle mouse button or scroll wheel click. Let's talk to Hugin here, get him off our ass. Cool. See, he gives you good hints. Make sure you listen to him. If you come across any boars, go ahead and kill them. And uh, if you do uh, get to craft a stone axe pretty early on, it makes for a good weapon. I honestly prefer the club just because there is a weapon in the further further down the, the road of the game that is uh, much, much better than, you know, any regular axe. And it, uh, it, it is affected by club skill. It's kind of like an upgraded club, you could say. All right, so you may have noticed by now, if you were playing along with me, or uh, following my advice, or you've already played a little bit of the game, you may have noticed that little yellow halo that kind of pops up on your head that just popped up for me. I'm going to keep trying to chop some of these trees down so I can point it out again. See that little yellow halo right there? Kind of comes with a little bit of a noise. Um, it, th that's a notification for you getting your skills increased. So give me one second, kill this little grayling here. Gather his resin, make sure you collect that. So if we open the menu, and we go to skills right here in the top right. See how it says wood cutting four, axes four, and there's a little red bar blocking clubs, unarmed, run, all of those. So skills increase just by doing the things. So if you're using an ax against an enemy, it will increase your axes skill. If you're cutting wood, it will increase your wood cutting. Um, so see, it says here ax damage when hitting trees. So actually, if you just hover over any skill, it'll tell you exactly what it is and what it does. So 
things like running and jumping are increased just by doing them. So if I jump a few times here, skill improve, jump one, just like that. So it'll tell you exactly what's going on there with that. If you've found value in this video so far, go ahead and click that subscribe button for me. It motivates the hell out of me so that I can make more videos like these. And I'm trying to make as best content as I possibly can for anybody that wants to watch this so that it can be as valuable as possible. I put hours of research and work into my videos just so that I can cram it all into 10 to 15 minutes of video for you guys. So after all this blabbing, go ahead and just click subscribe if you like the video and make sure you click that notification bell if you want to know when I upload more instructional slash tutorial videos. Thanks for the support. So now that we have a axe, club, and hammer, I'd like to tell you that if you push R, you can essentially um, sheath your tool or weapon or whatever equipment you're using. It'll make you run faster because if you push tab, open the inventory, come and look at stone axe, and you look at the bottom, the very bottom of this little menu, it pops up. It says, says movement speed minus 5%, total is 0%. So when I have the axe equipped, I have it out here now, my movement speed is subtracted by a total of 5%, but if I put it away, we look at it again, it says total 0%. So you want to make sure that you, whenever you're running around just to run around, you push R to sheathe your tool or weapon. Um, and that goes for the hammer as well. There's a little bit of a menu that comes with the hammer, so you can't really do anything when you have the hammer out. See how I can't talk to Hugin, but if I sheathe it, now I can talk to Hugin. So Hugin's telling us that since we crafted a hammer, we should probably start building a workbench, and that is exactly what I'm going to do. So what we need is we need 10 wood. I have 18, so I'm going to just go ahead and craft this workbench right away. And I'm actually going to craft my workbench near this starting area, uh, just simply because it makes it a little more convenient for me. You can build it wherever you want if you did end up exploring a ways away. This little um, um, relic stone area stays on your map permanently, and it, it, it doesn't move. So, we're going to go ahead and build that workbench. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and craft our workbench right here. We're just going to place it right here. And then you may notice right away that uh, you unfortunately cannot use the workbench. It says crafting station needs a roof. So, there's two ways we can handle this. And one way is that we can equip our hammer here. Right, right click, go into the building tab of the building menu. And then we're just going to build a little bit of a hut around this thing. Now, this is what we can do temporarily to get it so that we can use our workbench uh, out in the wilderness anywhere. You know, just put a little bit of a shelter around it. If I could get this wall to click here. There we go. And then uh, once you... Not sure what's going on here. A mystical force in this area stops you. Ah, so this is... Uh, you're not able to build... This in within this little relic area uh, very closely. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put that wall there and then this uh, you're going to want to take a a thatch roof I corner, excuse me, an O corner, um, 45 degree angle, and then just place it here. Place the other one right here. Oh, I need some wood. All right. So now once I've got that, since I've got that wood down now, I can tell that something's off with this build because the uh, corners aren't meeting very well here. So I'm going to go and push the middle mouse button to break that and get all of my parts back. And then I'm going to go ahead and try and fix it so it doesn't look as broken here. All right, I figured out my issue. It was because I was putting it in the corner of this wall and not on the edge of this wall. So you see how it looks a little more normal and connected. And now we can use the workbench because it has a roof. Now make sure when you are building with the uh, hammer, that these wood floors, if you try to use it as a roof, it will not work. So you can put a thatch roof here and then put the floor here if you like how that looks, if that's what you prefer, or if you want to put flooring on your roof in your house because it's flat and it looks nicer, just make sure you cover it with uh, these thatch roofing. Otherwise, it will not count towards being a roof and you cannot do certain things like rest or um, get the sheltered um, active bonus or whatnot so i'll talk more about those things later though so now that we can use the workbench let's get hugin off of it so he stops bothering us the workbench is pretty cool because it gives you a lot of other stuff that you can make and you can upgrade it with other um other structures and such which you can get later in the game once you find more uh resources but the really amazing thing about the workbench is that you can just click this repair an item button a bunch of times and it'll repair all of your equipment for free 
It does not cost any type of resources. It doesn't cost leather scraps or wood or stone. It just repairs it for the cost of nothing. Now, I'm going to craft a hoe just because I want to use a hoe for leveling out ground and such, which I will show you in a moment. But really, our main objective, once we get this workbench, is to build us a little, little bit of a hut house. So a 5x5 five five will be plenty of room to start with. We're just going to go ahead and build that little 5x5 five five hut house after we gather some more resources. And we're going to put like a chest, a couple chests in there, a bed, a fireplace, just, uh, you know, enough stuff to live off of. A 5x5 five five is kind of big for a beginner house, but it's a good, decent size. It's not too big and it's not too small. So here is the first tree I'm chopping down in this world here. And you'll see that as it falls, it does damage to this tree. And as it completely lands, it does more damage to itself. Now, when you chop a tree, when you chop a tree down, it turns into this very large, long log, uh, kind of like a regular tree would. And then you'll break it into two logs. And then once you break this one of these two logs, it will break into regular collectible wood, just like this. And when you break those two logs, it will give you 10 wood each for a total of 20 wood per tree chopped down if you're if you're curious about that. Watch out when you're getting attacked by graylings. If you look in the bottom left corner, you'll see a red uh, Trinity Infinity looking symbol and uh, 16. Your top HP when you first start the game is 24 and that can be increased with eating, which I'll talk about here soon. Another good little tip here, if you can get your two logs close enough together that you can hit them both at the same time, you'll be able to this one actually just rolled out of the way a little bit and you can you can manipulate these logs a little bit if you'd like to but anytime that you can do two things at once obviously is going to be more efficient kind of like fighting a grayling and chopping down a tree at the same time here just another quick little note here if you do want to spend some extra tr extra time trying to push some tree logs around into birch trees they do end up damaging the birch tree and you can get something called fine wood. And uh, having fine wood early game would give you a major advantage. You just also need to get core wood to build a fine wood or a fine bow. So you need fine wood from birch trees and you need core wood, which is from a pine tree in the black forest. So that's a little, that would be a little harder to get. But if you are a brave soul, you may have a fine bow before you even fight the first boss in Valheim. So I've managed to collect about 100 wood and I have noticed that it is dark out. So if you do want to try and stay out of the, the nighttime, I would advise just grabbing like 25 to 30 wood and just building a little shack, enough room that you can have a fire and a bed so that you may sleep through the night. But I'm going to just try and stay through the night here and build this uh, five by five house real quick. And then I will come back to you. Just another quick note here before I do start building my house actually is that if you take a hoe that we crafted from earlier, and you stand on a elevated level of ground, you're able to raise ground up and that'll be able to help you level out ground. If you right click while holding the hoe, you can see level ground, raise ground and pathen. I don't, I'm not really sure what this is. I think it just kind of paths like the ground a little um, and then raise ground costs two stone, but it does lift the ground up a little bit. I prefer leveling the ground because you can just raise the ground from a higher standpoint. All right, so while I'm building my house here, I'll give you a, a few tips. So just have the hammer equipped, right click, and then all of these items that are colored in, you are able to build. One thing you do want to note those when you are building wood floors, if we go here like this, I don't believe I will have any issues at the moment, but if I do, I'll point it out immediately. Um, actually, if you could see when it changes colors here, I don't think mine is going to. However, if you do run into floor placement issues um, where, you know, the floor is breaking for some unexpected reason, you're not really sure what's going on, but the color of the floor that you're trying to attach the piece to is changing colors, just like that was red. If the floor is red when you're trying to place it, you won't be able to place it there because building things in Valheim actually kind of does follow the laws of physics, unlike Minecraft. So you may want to just grab one of these wood poles Place it under your floor, just like this here. Give you an example. Boom, just like that. Okay, that was kind of poor placement, but you get the idea. So that will actually help support your structure, and you won't have to worry about um, things falling apart for some weird, unexpected reason. Everything else, for the most part, is just how you want it to look. So for me personally, I like having the 2x4 type beam things facing inward and I like the door handle to be on the right on the inside of my house. So then I just kind of build it 
how I like. And then for this house that I'm building, since it's just a small little five by five, which is plenty of room early game, like I said before, we're just gonna build it two walls high. And then that will be that. We'll put a roof on it and it'll be good to go. It does require more than 100 wood. So if you do want to build a smaller house, again, that is totally fine. I personally just recommend a five by five. It is a good amount of space for someone to start with. Just another quick note about combat. When you're fighting any enemy, you'll notice that you swing a little differently versus when you swing on a tree. And when you hear that little ding, that is almost like a critical hit or a combo hit. It does a little more damage than the rest of your regular hits usually would. All right. Now, after about around 200 wood, which is about 20 minutes to 30 minutes of work, I got a beautiful looking five by five house here. Make sure that you put a 45 degree angle uh, thatch roof on top because that's gonna vent your fireplace in the center and you use 26 degree angled um, regular thatch siding here and 26 degree angled O thatch for the, two, for the corner here and here. Now, that does sound like a lot of work and uh, it was a little bit of work, but I promise you it will be worth it because once you have this amazing little five by five house, it will last you a very, very long time. And make sure you destroy your crafting bench last, unlike what I just did here. Uh, it was kind of dumb of me. Let me replace that so I can destroy everything else. Boom, just like that, you get all your wood back as well. And then we're gonna go ahead and put the crafting table in the middle, or excuse me, the workbench in the not in the middle, in the house, goodness, right there works. And then we're going to actually destroy, we're gonna get rid of Hugin, and we're going to destroy the center piece here. And we're going to go ahead and put a uh, campfire down here. And then I will um, build almost like a chimney around it so that it vents out the top. Because if you don't do that, you will die of smoke inhalation. It is pretty much the same way uh, or the same death as uh, a fire death. So let me go gather some stones and I will build that. If you do end up venturing out a little bit, try and find a water source or a water line rather like a small river or a lake or pond or something so that you are able to gather flint along with stone and wood because you will need flint early on as well. Now make sure I'm going to talk about cooking here a little bit and food and how all that works. So when you put a cooking station over top of the fire, you can put uh, food items. So if you kill boars or necks, you can put their uh, food or, you know, you, you can cook it essentially. You'll just put two pieces on the cooking station. You'll hear that little sizzle and then they'll be done. You just walk up a little bit and collect it. So I'm just going to cook. So I cooked all my food here. So we're going to eat that and eat this. And then you'll notice that my health bar down here in the bottom left goes up. And if you if we look at this here, it says healing at the bottom of this little menu. It says healing one HP per tick. So it says one HP per tick. So that gives you I think it means one HP per second, but I'm not totally sure. As you see, since I'm uh, in my house in the top right, it says fire, resting and shelter. Uh, I believe that is the reason as to why I'm healing quite fast. Ten and a half HP every few seconds or so. And so you'll notice if you try to eat more than one type of food at a time, it says you can't eat any more of that food. And that is because you can only eat one of that food every 600 seconds. That's the duration for raspberries. As you see, when you hover over an item, the menu pops up, it'll say duration, and then it'll have a number for how many seconds. Now that's uh, 10 minutes. And for the, I believe for the neck tails and the little, the slab of meat, I believe it is 1200 seconds or 20 minutes. So now that we have a little house, we are going to build a bed. And since we already have a fire, we're good to go for that. So we do need some more wood for the bed and the chest, which we're also going to build. So I'm going to go gather that real quick. One thing I did forget to mention is that when it is nighttime, you'll notice in the top right corner, it says that I am cold. Uh, it'll also notify you on the on the front of your screen with you know the yellow text that pops up. It'll say you feel cold. Now the only effect that that being cold has on you is that it makes your stamina regenerate slower. That isn't really that bad of a thing. Um, the cold effect does come around pretty much all the time at night and whenever you are in the mountains and you can freeze to death. So do be mindful of that. But once you come to the house here, you'll have shelter, fire, you'll be resting, everything will be good so you won't be cold. Also, another quick tip, if you are wet and you come to a fire, you will be um, 
dried off much quicker. Also, make sure you keep your fire fueled. It does use wood. All right, so we're going to craft our bed right next to the fire here. Nice and cozy. And then we're going to put a couple chests down just so that we can store some of our stuff. And then we're going to be moving on to a lot more fun stuff. All right, so if you control click, it'll automatically move an item over for you. I'm going to go ahead and move our resin, beach seeds, our torch, our boar trophy, and our leather scraps over. We're going to want to hold on to our stone, our wood. I'm also going to put our feathers in there, and we're going to want to hold on to any food we might have. All right, so we are ready to go explore for more resources. However, we're going to sleep through the night first, claim this bed, sleep in it, and it will be daytime. And I also want to talk about resting and um, how how that works and everything it does for you. So when you're in a house that is, sh you know, sheltered, it has a roof, walls, everything you need, the shelter pop-up icon will, will come up. And um, you'll also have the resting, which has a comfort level. Now, the higher the comfort level, the more time you will have with the rested effect. Now, the rested effect is kind of it's pretty cool and very powerful. It increases your health regeneration by 50%, increases stamina regeneration by 100%, and increases the XP gained by 50%. Now, the effect will last longer depending on what you have in your house, which is what the comfort level is. You can add different things like furniture, or um, you'll eventually come up upon deer skin, and that will let you... Uh, or deer hide or whatnot, and you'll be able to place that down in here as well, which will also increase the comfort level. Moving on, we do need to gather some more resources, and we're going to want to get a bow as quickly as possible because that makes it super easy to hunt deer. However, uh, we are going to craft a flint knife if we can find some flint because that is the easiest way to kill deer early on. Now, quickly before I forget, I'm going to mention that if you push X near a fire, when you are not in your own home, say you place a fire out in the wilderness, you push X near a fire, you will sit down and rest, and that will give you the rested effect as well. Of course, it won't last as long. I believe it's around six to eight minutes. I don't remember exactly. The rested effect, six to eight minutes if you're resting by a fire out in the wilderness, uncovered, completely uncovered, doesn't matter. It's about six to eight minutes, I believe. Just a quick side note, I did change up my chimney a little bit and it looks much nicer. I just put regular walls attached to the floor and I put little half walls on the bottom there uh, so that food couldn't escape. So I've got three walls surrounding it going all the way up with four walls, ignore that auto save. Um, and then I've just got one wall open so that I can access it. It is a little smoky, so if that makes you uncomfortable, you could definitely do uh, something different. You know, put the fire in the corner and then just leave the corner open. Just make sure that you have the fire covered uh, some way or another so that when it rains, you know, it doesn't get uh, uh, put out. All right, so I did manage to find a body of water so that I could get some flint. Right now, our objective is out to get some flint or either a flint knife or about eight leather scraps and ten wood so that we can make a bow. Either one is ideal if you have one or the other. Go ahead and just craft it right away. Flint knife is useful for killing deers. You can sneak up behind them and stab them in the back. It'll instantly kill them if you've got the flint knife. Otherwise, one of the other better ways to kill deer is going to be to take a club or an axe and try and scare them into a small body of water big enough that it'll slow them down, and then you can just beat them to death with whatever you've got. Otherwise, the third and best or easiest option is to just use a bow and arrows, and you'll be able to kill them uh, one shot from a good distance. Just make sure that if you are going to use a bow, you do need to aim a little high because the bow does have drop. All right, I did forget to mention that if you are going to go ahead and do the water method to kill deer, do be careful. You don't want to drown. That would be bad. You do lose stamina just by swimming and you don't regenerate it in the water. So if you are going to push the deer into the water, don't bother chasing them out into the water. Just be careful. Try to try to kill them before they get too far away. I do recommend trying to craft the bow or the flint knife, or if you can't do either, you can still try and use your stone axe and sneak up on them and kill them that way as well. I would highly suggest going out and finding flint, whether you want to make a flint knife or not, because you can make a flint spear, which is pretty useful and cool, but you also need it to make flint head arrows, which is something else that we're going to need for our complete start, ultimate start, beginner start, whatever you want to call it. Also, when you're out, if you do get near a body of water, make sure you kill these necks because you get necktails from them. 
and they are one of the best foods you can eat in the game. Ah, mushrooms. Yes, make sure that you collect these mushrooms if you come across mushrooms as well. They're one of the better uh, natural foods that you can find that you don't have to really kill anything for. All right, so I do have enough to craft the crude bow. It isn't too hard to collect eight leather scraps. You just kind of got to run around and try and find boar because they drop those leather scraps for you. And then uh, our main objective again is to craft the bow. So once you can do that, do that as soon as possible. But thereafter, we're going to want to craft a full set of leather armor, an optional spear, a ton of flint arrows, and maybe some fire ones if you want those too. But once we've gathered 10 wood and eight leather, we need to craft that bow just like I've already done. But then after we craft the bow, we're going to want to get 18 deer hide, 80 wood, 10 flint, 20 feathers. Actually, make that 20 flint because we're going to need to craft a wood chopping block. So 20 flint, 20 feathers, and then some optional items of 80 resin, 2 leather scraps, an extra 10 flint, an extra 5 wood, and an extra 4 deer hide. And then finally, 5 bone fragments if you're brave enough to fight some skeletons or if you can even find them. But once you gather all of those materials, you'll be able to craft a full set of leather armor with a hide cape, which is what the bone fragments are for, 100 flint head arrows, and as you can see, I've already found 34 in chests just around in the world, and then um, a flint spear as well, and 100 fire arrows, and that's if we collect all of those items that I mentioned previously, along with the optional ones. So... I'm going to go ahead and go gather all of those items for you just so I can show you what it'll look like to be there. It does take a good amount of time, but I'm going to try and do it as quickly as possible for my sake. Obviously, I'm going to just do a jump cut for you. Anyways, all right, so that 10 flint is going to be for the chopping block that levels up the workbench to level two. As you can see here, this gold star shows that it's level two. That is given us the ability to upgrade some items to higher levels, but it's also given us the ability to make flint head arrows, fire arrows, and that's it. Give us the ability to make fire arrows and flint head arrows. See, this is just one way you can try and sneak up on a deer here, you know, with an axe or a club, preferably if you have a flint knife because it'll insta-kill them. As you can see, your stamina slowly drains, but if you just sit here for a second, it'll regenerate, unlike when you're swimming. Now I'm going to try and sneak up on this deer while it increases my sneak skill, and I can try and sneak up behind it and just end its life immediately. Just like that, boom. And now it'll pop. There you go. And you get raw meat and deer hide, and that is what we need to make a full set of leather armor. Also, it gives you the ability to make a deer or a, yeah, deer skin rug and a tanning uh, rack, which you can put in your house for more comfort and uh, to increase the level of your workbench. And this is how you kill a deer with a bow. Just like that. You can also do it with boars if you'd like. I don't think they die instantly, though. Ah, oh, they do. Just keep in mind when you're drawing the bow, it does consume stamina. So just uh, keep that in mind. And don't waste your flint head arrows on puny enemies like boars and deer. Just use regular wood arrows. It only costs wood to make it. Also, be wary of beehives as well. These guys, uh, it kind of looks like they poison you, but really it's just essentially them stinging you, so just be careful. Totally worth this chest, though, because find amber feathers and uh, flint head arrows that we need, so very worth it. Also, you can destroy the beehive and potentially collect a queen bee, and uh, you can use it for your own... Uh, your own intensive purposes. So you might see that little star under this deer's health and name here. So what that star means is that there's the potential that the mob or, you know, whatever it is, can drop better loot or more loot. So typically with animals, it's going to just be more loot. So instead of just getting two deer hide, I might get like four deer hide off of this guy. And I, I personally have only ever seen up to two stars, but I'm sure it can get much higher than just two. And this is why we stay away from the Black Forest, because we encounter great dwarves and trolls and many other enemies that we don't want to fight. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and run away and try and mark this area as the Black Forest if I can stop for even two seconds to mark it. Oh, and great dwarf brutes as well. Those guys are also quite difficult to fight. This is what you get for exploring the world of Valheim. And if you do manage to kill them, especially the one with stars, uh, you do get gray dwarf eyes which I, I guess are 
just a trophy. I'm not really sure if they can be crafted into anything, but it's pretty cool looking, I guess. You stand at the prow of a leaping ship, the salt spray before you, and the joyful shriek of gulls. I couldn't read it all fast enough, but we are here. I have a good, I would say, 90% of what I set out to get gathered and completely crafted. So, we've got that full set of leather armor with the cape. I managed to kill some, uh, some skeletons and um, some other hard enemies that I wish I did not have to encounter. Uh, it did happen, though. That does sometimes happen. Um, we do still have only a level 2 workbench, but I did manage to get a flint axe. I got a shield, a flint spear. already had the hoe. We've got 100 fire arrows, 100 flint head arrows, plus an extra 15. I did find about half of this just kind of out and about under broken houses and in chests. These shitty wood arrows. We've got some food here. Um, wilderness food, and then I also have some raw uncooked food here yet, which you're going to want to cook all of it and store it, and you're going to need a, uh, a decent amount, not a shit ton, but a little bit of food. Make sure when you get ready for the boss fight, you're going to want to eat a necktail, a uh, chunk of uh, meat, and a mushroom, and that'll give you the best, the best ideal outcome of health for when you fight the final boss. But, you know, I've got my little deer hide rug here, and uh, this is this is pretty much completes the complete beginner guide, uh, start like starter beginner ultimate completion guide for beginners. Make sure you set yourself on fire. That's ideal. But yeah, if you have any questions whatsoever, or if you just like this video and it helped you out a lot, go ahead and leave a like, or go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you do have any questions, I will be happy to answer any and all of your questions. Another quick tip right here at the end for you, if you use the scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Hope this helped you out. Please leave a comment down below if you have any questions. I'm super, super happy to answer them. And if I don't have the answer right away, I will definitely find it for you and give you your answer that you're looking for. Again, hopefully this video helped you. I will see you in the next one. Peace. So we're going to want to gather wood and, um, interesting. There's no stones around here. Hey, there's my, uh, see my lost little meat chunk down there. Now, if you look down there, you see that. All right. That's going to be cut into the end. So, you know, this is just one way. All right, putting that in the end, that's a big fail.